from WUHF TV. This is Fox Rochester News first to ten in high definition. Two down. Yes, they're down and not good. Negative, and I don't want. I'm in the danger zone right now. I need a meeting. I'm going to be joining them. It's a very, <coughs> it's a very difficult situation. Firefighters raced to the scene of a raging fire only to be ambushed by a sniper. Two are killed, two others wounded, plunging the entire community into mourning. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. It should be a time of celebration tonight, but instead, this Christmas Eve is marked by shock and sorrow after a gunman ambushed four firefighters in the West Webster Fire District. Around 5.30 this morning, this was the scene. Fire crews in West Webster called to a house fire on Lake Road. When they arrived, they were shot at. Four firefighters were hit. Immediately, police and SWAT teams swarmed the area. All other fire crews were pulled from the scene because it just wasn't safe. And because of that, the fire spread from one house to another. Seven houses burned to the ground and a few others were damaged. This was the scene hours later. Once the area was deemed secure, firefighters were finally able to get to the scene and douse the flames. About 11 this morning, they found the body of the gunman dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And around six tonight, the flames were all out. Crews were called back. This investigation on Lake Road in Webster will continue in the morning. These are the four firefighters who were shot this morning. Mike Ciparini was killed. He is a lieutenant with the Webster Police Department, a 20-year veteran and a volunteer firefighter. He led the Explorer program, which mentors young people who want to be firefighters. One of those was Tomas Kochelka, also killed this morning. He was just 20 years old, a rookie. A 2011 graduate of Webster Thomas High School, Kochelska worked as a 911 dispatcher and again was working as a rookie in the West Webster Fire Department. The two wounded firefighters are Joseph Hofstetter, whose voice you heard on the 911 tape. He is actually a Rochester firefighter who was volunteering in West Webster. Hofstadter suffered a gunshot wound to his pelvis and he is recovering tonight at Strong Hospital. Also wounded firefighter Theodore Scardino. He was shot in the left shoulder and lung as well as his right knee. And a fifth man, Greece police officer John Ritter, was also injured. He was off duty and traveling behind fire trucks heading to the scene when his vehicle was hit by gunfire. Ritter suffered minor injuries to his arms. The man police say is responsible for this tragedy is a convicted killer who lived on Lake Road. Here he is, 62-year-old William Spengler. He served more than 15 years in prison for killing his 92-year-old grandmother, and we'll have much more on him in a moment. But first, the scene tonight at the West Webster Fire Hall is one of profound grief. A vigil was held there to remember fallen heroes, and Vanessa Herring was there. Candles and flowers adorn the wall outside the West Webster Fire Department. Reese, honoring Mike Ciparini and Tomas Kachelka, both ambushed and killed responding to a house fire. First responders from several departments, including Chilai, Henrietta, and Irondequoy, came to pay their respects. Claire Guadaginino was a longtime friend of Officer Ciparini, who was called Chip by just about everybody he knew. He was always, he's always been called Chip. I've really, when people call him Mike, I had no clue who they were talking about. Chip was loved by friends and the community for his service. When my mom was very sick, he um, was there when the ambulance got there, and he sat next to my mom and tried to comfort her. So um, he's just, he was a good man. Anthony Bellasai is originally from Irondequoit. Now living in Arizona, he's in Webster for the holiday. Although he didn't know Mike Ciparini or Tomas Kachelka, the tragedy still hits close to home. We we're very close to where it happened. We we're about two, three miles away. We woke up to the helicopters and everything. He says he started talking about meeting at the firehouse to honor the fallen firefighters on Facebook. And he's comforted by the strong show of support. You can see the result. So just to really, you know, it's a nice outpouring of the community for the fallen. Bellasai says it was just something he had to do. You know, we do this out west also, 
and uh, yeah, just kind of felt compelled to do it while I was here for the holidays. While the community comes to terms with the loss of Chipperini and Kachoka, it's not certain if everyone will be able to move forward. I know that there's strength in numbers, and um, with all the prayer, we will get through, but I don't think it will ever be the same. I, I think it's going to be a long road. And there were dozens of people, at least, you know, 30 when I was there, and the fire trucks just kept coming, people kept coming. Mm -hmm. I was there earlier in the evening, uh, people dropping off food, flowers, just yeah. anything they could think of to help those firefighters who are at the hall. Absolutely, and I, I do know that a lot of fire halls in Rochester, surrounding Rochester, in rural areas and in urban areas, are now setting up some memorials, people just passing by to, to bring anything they can to serve the, for the firefighters that they know. So this is uh, something that affects everybody. I'm curious tonight, uh, did you hear from anybody, it's any firefighters from other districts who came in to support these, these fellows? Because I know it's such a tight-knit community. I did. I talked to first responders from the, the Penfield Department, and what they told me when I asked them why they came, why it was so important for them to be there tonight, they said it's family. It's like a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. and you know, I think they feel as though they would have done it for them. And to be shot at. Oh, such a tragedy. Yes. All right. Vanessa Herring, thank you so much. Stay right there because I know that you were um, you were there today when a lot of the community leaders spoke. They uh, mobilized immediately in the hours after the shooting from Lieutenant Governor and former Rochester Police Chief and Rochester Mayor Bob Duffy to Monroe County Executive Maggie Brooks, who herself is a resident of Webster. Here's what they had to say. As you can tell, emotions are extremely Hi. Uh, there's a heightened awareness to this kind of violence in, in uh, light of what happened in Connecticut. And I, I just want everyone to remember it's Christmas Eve. We have first responders and we have families who are in pain and crisis today. And we need to, as a community, keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Our hearts go out to uh, Officer Chip's family um, and certainly to Tomas's uh, family as well. And um, it. Uh, you don't want anything like this to ever happen, but when it happens on Christmas Eve, um, it's, uh, it's unthinkable. There's no words to describe it. These people are selfless individuals who go out to save other people's lives and then put their lives in danger by people that really probably shouldn't be out in the street running loose. On behalf of Governor 2, I want to thank Chief Pickering. There's a, you know, the former colleagues of mine at the table here, and I'm just so proud of the way this community has responded uh, to this terrible event. I can't think of anyone who could respond better than what they've done and have to go through this. And any way that the state can help, it stands by. Uh, I've been in con constant contact with the governor today. This is something that certainly he has uh, been staying on top of. It is, again, it is just unthinkable, unspeakable that this could happen, and we just ask that we keep these families in our thoughts and prayers during this very, very tough time. And those shootings did prompt this statement today from Governor Cuomo, saying all of our thoughts and prayers go to the families and friends of those who were killed in this senseless act of violence. New York's first responders are true heroes, he said, and as they time and again selflessly rush toward danger in order to keep our families and communities safe, we as the community of New York mourn their loss as now two more families must spend the holidays without their loved ones. On behalf of all my family and New Yorkers, the, the governor said he offers his deepest condolences to the families and friends of those killed and pray for the recovery of those injured. It is still not clear why William Spengler set the fire and ambushed first responders. Webster police say Spengler was using an assault rifle and other guns, but they did not specify what type of guns. Police say Spengler was firing from an elevated area behind a berm near his house. It wasn't until about 11 a.m. that his body was found on the nearby beach behind that strip of burning homes. Spengler was 62 years old. In 1980, he beat his grandmother to death with a hammer. He was convicted of manslaughter and served 17 years in prison. He was released in 1988 on supervised parole, but that ended in 2006, and he had had no contact or run-ins with police since until, of course, today. I think that we have to not only get a handle on gun control, but we have to get a handle on uh, the mental health issues. And, you know, for the last 20 years, we've been turning people loose and, and uh, deinstitutionalizing people. And I, I think we've swung too far. I think there are people that still need to be in institutions that are a danger to themselves or others. And this is a classic example. 
Because Spangler was acting as a sniper, the scene for first responders was total chaos. It was also terrifying for residents. Police say about 30 people in all were evacuated from that strip of Lake Road where the fires took place. Some of them were actually tackled by police as they ran from their homes. In the darkness, police didn't know whether these residents were connected to the shooting or not. In the end, dozens of residents taken from the scene by police escort, and that, of course, includes those residents whose homes were destroyed in the fire. A little further away, neighbors were warned to stay indoors until police could find the suspect. But many homeowners who could see those flames and the smoke from their windows wanted to know more about what was happening. Caroline Tucker has that part of the story. Lake Road east of the Swing Bridge remained closed into the evening here in Webster. It's the spot where the four firefighters were shot at, two killed and seven homes destroyed. It took fire crews several hours to even start fighting the flames and smoke billowing from these lakeside homes. 191 Lake Road is the site where firefighters were initially called just after 530 in the morning. Officials say that's where the fire started before shots were fired at first responders. The area was unsecure through much of the morning and crews could not get into the area to fight the fire because they did not know where the suspected shooter was. Some neighbors nearby saw the flames and couldn't understand why fire crews weren't on scene. They say this is a tragic day. It was why are the firemen not fighting this fire? We, we couldn't understand why it was going from house to house. It's, it's just a very quiet neighborhood, so it's just very alarming to see something like this in our own backyard. And that's the scary part is just you never know, no matter how nice this community is, it's just any, anything can happen no matter where you're at. So this is just a complete shock. 33 residents here on Lake Road were evacuated earlier in the day by a SWAT team. The Red Cross has been trying to help those who were displaced. In Webster, Caroline Tucker, News 8. And we will have much more in a moment as we remember fallen firefighters Thomas Kachalka and Mike Ciparini. Fox First to 10 continues right after this.